The following podcast contains spoilers and adult language. Listener discretion is advised. The Showdown Podcast with Corey and Vic. The debate on what movie is better, Corey's choice versus Vic's choice. They each plead their case and try to destroy the others. It's a combat of subjective opinion. I'm Brad Scott, your impartial judge, and as always, my say is final. Welcome to episode 27 of the Showdown Podcast. This episode is the Jeff Vibbert Memorial Invitational Classic featuring Jeff Vibbert. Today's fighters, the challenger, Corey, the dancing destroyer, king of sting, count of Monte Fisto, master of disaster, Miller, and his opponent, the reigning showdown pod. Cast champion Victor Face Hugger Miller. Let's get ready to podcast. That British guy was worth every penny <laughs> that we paid to bring him in. Uh, although he did forget to mention the movies, this is the Jeff Vibbert Invitational Classic featuring Jeff Vibbert. Thank yep. you, thank you. I like how it's a memorial classic, but I'm not dead. But that's you're cool. You're not like it. dead, um, uh, but you're you're with us, so the career might be after this episode. Probably. Yes. Don't feel bad. I was dead for like two months. Yeah, so it's yeah. All dead. yeah. 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 And uh, Corey is. We basically Jeff is a uh, stand-up comedian and host of the Jeff Bibbert podcast. Uh, you can find on iTunes and other platforms as well. Yep. Uh, he's also going to be opening up for Pat McAfee. What days now? July 11th and the 12th. And where's that at? The Carmel Palladium. Tickets are sold out, so you're you're fucked. You're just <laughs> don't worry. Can I say? Can you I, can, can hear him here. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Say cut if you want. Yeah. We, we we encourage. It's it. sold out, you cunts. There you go. <laughs> I crash um, like a drunken sailor. It's yeah. all good. So <laughs> Jeff is joining us today as our special guest, and uh, you can also hear me on the Jeff Bieber podcast, episode 11. Um, but we're going to be, we're basically going to be battling with two of his all-time favorite movies. Corey is taking, uh... Rocky IV. And Vic. Alien. All right, so, uh, Vic's the reigning champion. Uh, do you want to go first or second? I am deferring to my colleague. All right, Dancing Ooh. Destroyer, King of Sting, Count of Montefisto, Master of Disaster, Cowrie uh. Mueller. What do you got? Name the name comes back. There we go, Rocky IV. Okay. Uh, in case you don't know, Rocky IV is about uh, Apollo Creed decides that uh, once, uh, what was his name, Dolph Lundgren, he's, uh, what the fuck was his name? Uh, the in Russian. the movie? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Ivan Drago. Uh, how the fuck did I forget that? I'm trying to figure out why you're talking about Rocky IV. Because He's talking about it because that's the movie. That's because that's the You movie. really put Rocky on this. No, it's Rocky IV. Uh, Definitely put Rocky. No. When I talked to He's you, the one. this is quite the predicament. When I talked to you, you said Rocky. Have you not and I seen said Alien for? Are you not? No, familiar? you've never I seen don't Rocky, watch Rocky movies. I watch Rocky specifically for this man right here. Oh yeah, well, you, exactly for this man right are, here. You, you should are, be honored. You are four <laughs> movies behind. Oh mother, you're lucky. I know, you're lucky. I know the story, so it's good. Uh, this, okay, this is going to be interesting. So anyhow. Ivan Drago uh, decides that he wants to fight, Apo- uh, not Apollo Creed, but Rocky. And Apollo, having this near uh, end-of-life crisis, uh, he's, I, I should say midlife crisis, he decides, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fight him. He's talking a bunch of shit. I, I, got, I got my stuff. Yeah, there. more for the, uh, more for the, he wanted to be the guy. Yeah, he wanted to be, yeah, he wanted to do that. And because after fighting Rocky at the end of three, He's like, he feels like he doesn't want to be done with his career. You know what? You know what that says? It's the same thing uh, Woody Harrelson said in White Man Can't Jump. A black man would rather look good, win second. <laughs> a white man would rather win first, look good second. <laughs> and, and and looking good, he did when he came out to fight Apollo, dressed in uh, his all uh, red, white, and blue, and uh, and dancing to uh, James Brown. His future robe. Yes. Oh, living in America. It's a great scene. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. I mean, that's, that's just an icon. Everybody knows that. When you hear that song, uh, Living in America, you automatically think of Rocky Four. And uh, so he ends up dying in the ring. And uh, 
And don't worry, we say we got the spoiler cut. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We give away shit like one of the saddest scenes in any movie I've ever seen. Right? I mean, it's like it's like old Yeller. Yeah, Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> Apollo Creed dying. Damn. <laughs> So, uh, so, so Rocky's pissed off, and especially with the way that Ivan is is handling it, because uh, he does, doesn't have any remorse. So Rocky's like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna take him on," and <clears throat> which will which will end up setting up the the final scene with the, the fight. But everything leading up to it at the press conference, not one, not two, but three music montages. I mean, this that's total that's total awesomeness right there. Isn't uh, that, isn't Hearts on Fire one of those uh, montages? I can't remember what the names of the songs were. Hearts on Fire. I, I, I can't remember. And it's like he's yeah. riding a motorcycle yeah. and he throws the helmet at the statue. Yeah, it's no, a, that's no. I think that's in one of the older. I think it's one of the previous ones. I don't. I, think but it's I think they bring one. it back for this music. one. I think the, the music music's is the same. In I don't remember the motorcycle because the first montage is him driving around. So, so yeah. we need to figure out whether or not they recycle the music and the imagery. Oh, that, that's you can do that if you want. Uh, but that's anyhow, what you're talking about. Oh no! So he ends up he ends up flying out to uh, to to Russia to train out there, and uh, even though his wife doesn't think it's a good idea to do it at all because she's afraid of him, and most likely Ivan is is doing steroids. Which they allude to, but they never said. What do you mean they they show him hooked up they, to yeah. all types well, of shit? They and, do, they do, but they they show him getting a shot, but they never actually say that it's that steroids. That's it's, Come it's, on, that was cortisone. Yeah, it, it's, it, it it's just painkillers. They call him the shot. superhuman. He's, so he's born in a lab. Yeah, I mean, yeah, basically, he's like, born Russians in a lab. don't have rules when it comes to things like that. Yeah, so. I stand idiot. corrected. Hearts on fire is uh, is him with that beard. Like, oh, like the log, like the Russia, log on his shoulder, yeah. Yeah. Okay. which is like that's the maybe the best montage ever. Like, yeah. Yeah. could you like? Because uh, I'm like, I can't afford even a Bowflex, you know. So I'm like, <laughs> shit. There's maybe I can get a good solid workout in. I, just I mean, just gotta, gotta go, go find a telephone pole and come. Yeah, up. I can't get a mattress shipped to my own house. I don't know how we <laughs> would get workout equipment shipped in the middle of Siberia. So yeah, I. And he has he has that giant sled. He, he's got the got uh, Apollo's manager and uh, is it Adrian. Adrian, Adrian and, comes out, yeah. and uh, her brother, and and what's his name? The, the other dude. They're all sitting in that. Polly. Yeah, Polly and the other dude. Though they're all sitting in that wagon thing, and he's like picking it up and raising it up over his head. He's doing. He's got old school training going on while Ivan's got the new technology. You know. So what? it's almost like it's not only not only is it old school training versus new school training with with Ivan running around running around the track and doing it hooked up to machines and everything but it's also old school versus new school as far as boxers go and as far as uh, uh, not wanting to deal with getting old while you get the younger You're guys coming in a lot of imagery into this oh there is it they, comes down to he didn't have enough money to afford to go to, to, to Siberia and train and get all that equipment so. why would he <laughs> he didn't need to who he's Rocky had money. Yeah, he, he had didn't millions. See, no, I, see, yeah, so he didn't, why, why didn't he go to there and train then? Because he didn't want to. He wanted to go old school. No, no, and, 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 and the Russians set him up in that particular house and, a, and said, he said, this is what I want. And they gave him everything that he wanted. He, the way he trained, he reminded me of my dad. Because, like, my dad has been, like, single for, like, the past 10, 15 years and yeah. living in, like, these one-bedroom apartments. <laughs> and I'll come and there'll be, like, a pillow... Wrapped around like a pole in the kitchen that he just, just punch oh, it. I just, you know, he has a punching bag. You just hook it up right here. It's got duct tape all over it. There's like a makeshift speed bag somewhere. Like, yeah, if you'd have seen uh, the movie, Vic. <laughs> yeah. If there's one thing that I've learned, it's the money makes you soft. It that's, does. That's what I so you got to go back to the basics. Hell, and... even in three, he had when he was going to fight Mr. T. Yeah. He had to go back to the uh, shitty gym with Apollo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, again, you you should have. <laughs> You should have already seen that one. I saw. You don't even get in the past. That one I saw. I'm not even factoring this into judgment. That one I saw. Oh well, then they had two black guys. Anyways, (laughs) compare the montage in this to No Retreat, No Surrender. I was about to say the same thing. You're gonna tell me it's better than that one? I'm not. No, it's a better training montage than that. Cheesiest '80s. Mm. Kung Fu movie of all time. I don't know. I think it, it ranks up there, but I think No Retreats probably got it by just a smidge. Only because there was nobody, there was no black black guy sitting on his lap while he did reverse push-ups. Eating ice cream. Eating ice cream. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous. But it actually, it actually happened. It happened in the movie. It's yes. actually a thing, it's and, and it's, it's actually probably why it's one of our highest rating movies amongst the group. <laughs> 
simply because you're, of you're, that ridiculous you're that, welcome. That's part of the scene there. If that was their movie poster, <laughs> no, I it. it also looks like Juno. I thought that was even... that, that shot alone <laughs> would do it. Huh? Looks looks like uh, Michael, Sarah, and one of the Cosby kids. Yeah. Uh, but this After movie also drugged, the, allegedly. Not only this, but uh, Rock, not only did all that happen, but uh, Rocky got Polly for his birthday. Got him a robot that it that they that they insinuate oh. ends up by the end of the movie being being Polly's girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> you can Happy believe birthday, that. Polly. Yeah, it starts out all robotic. By the end, it's like, oh, Polly, you shouldn't Turns smoke. into Siri. Yeah, well, yeah, he makes it and, and still on the, hey, Polly, what'd you do to the robot? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Polly, you made it a woman now? <laughs> hey, Polly, are you fucking the robot? <laughs> <laughs> are you, you, where do you insert Sylvester. your hardware, Polly? <laughs> I didn't know we'd have Sylvester Stallone on the podcast. I know. Yeah, it's it's cool. amazing. People show up here all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like anybody could at any we given time. We tell them Vic's up. dying of cancer. We got a lot of make wishes. I tell you, I, I don't know if you remember this, but it was funny during uh, during the press conference that that Rocky has with Ivan. Uh, he said, "No, was it then? I can't remember. Maybe it's afterwards. I think maybe right before the fight, Rocky says that he's not getting paid, and the look that Polly gives him, like, what the fuck? Seriously, you're not getting paid? Mm-hmm. It was just like it was one of the funniest things. Polly is the comedy of this film. He's the he's the." Uh, He's the, the, the comedy aspect. No, no, when you watch it in film. 2015, the film is the comedy of yeah. the film. It's just, it's that great. Well, There's so many yeah. ridiculous things. Yeah, but I think when it was when it was originally made, he was meant to be the When it was originally made, it was like, fucking, it was like, it was... 79? 70? No. No, it this was 80, 84. Oh, I'm thinking, 79, oh, no, I'm thinking of Alien. Alien so, yeah, 79. 76 what, was the original. What, when, yeah. what year did this come out? It's like, 80, I want to say like 80. So this is basically yeah. like this is like eighties American 85. Sniper. Ninety five, yeah, nineteen eighty five. Right? This is like eighties American Sniper. <sighs> Think about yeah. it. Think about this it. This is a political it message. Was, it was a, a, it, it rallied it, the it, it really did. We had we had big problems with Russia at the time. This movie is just as realistic as American Sniper. So I mean, they're I, about the same. I was thinking if that's the case. I guess I'll go with it you is guys. because I'll because at the time we did have we did have a big a big feud with with Russia. No, I remember it was Rocky that? was the one that brought us. Which together. one was his that? speech at the end? No, that's quiet. Which which political thing was going on with Russia at the time? We had the Cold War going on in eighty five. Yep, that's what we were dealing. Yeah, with. Yeah, why Russia. do you think they made it a giant Russian? <laughs> the opening of the movie is a Russian boxing glove and an American boxing glove, well, and it's like it Monday Night Football. They fucking explode. Well, it wasn't Russia so much as Cuba. No, we weren't. We weren't in it with Cuba. We were born in it with Russia. The Cold War was over. No, not at that point. It was still going on. on. It may have been on the tail ends, but it was still <laughs> going on. That's why they made it a Russian against against America. It's, I, I mean, think the, I think the hockey movie with the Russians versus the Americans. The Mighty Ducks. Miracle? No, not the American. <laughs> not the Mighty Ducks miracle. I don't know. I don't know what Mighty Ducks actually. Oh uh, yeah. Well, your new your new favorite team. Mighty, yeah. Too bad they're gone. Yeah. yeah. Let them talk and smack. Give the man his pride. Let I don't watch team. hockey enough to care. Yeah. I, I, he just got started. Let him have it. <laughs> God. And by started, I watched a quarter and a half, and then posted something on Facebook. The ju- the jug wasn't even worth watching the rest of the game. Yeah. Hockey so anyhow, that's that's uh, that's the whole. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't say the ending. Rocky ends up beating Ivan after coming out to booze uh, because they are fighting in Russia. The whole crowd is not behind, totally behind Ivan. And by the end of the movie, because he persevered persevered through all, uh, the whole crowd was behind him and uh, not cheering for Ivan any longer. And Ivan pretty much. Could not get up anymore. Oh, this happened in out. Russia, right? Yes, it did. And even yeah, the president I, I, of I, Russia I, I have, was clapping I for Russia. I have Rocky. such a hard time believing that in that time frame that the Russian president wouldn't have shot every person inside of that building after the end of the movie, after the end of that thing. For well, no, you didn't hear Rocky's speech. Yeah. Rocky right? <laughs> If, if, if me and him could come together, if you and us could come together, then we would all come together. No wonder they couldn't understand. Uh, they were still trying to decipher it as they ran out of the country. By the way, uh, Stallone has stated that uh, the original punching scenes between him and Lundgren are completely authentic. Stallone wanted to capture, capture a realistic scene, and uh, Lundgren agreed they would engage in legitimate sparring. One particular punch from Dolph Lundgren 
uh, to Stalin's chest, slammed his heart against his breastbone, causing his heart to swell. He suffered from labored breathing and a blood pressure over 200, was flown from the set in Canada to St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica, and was forced into intensive care for eight days. Look, that man is not small. Okay. Who? Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren. He's a fucking, like, baby giant. Yes. I mean, that's the bottom line to it. If you got hit by even the weakest of baby giants, you're going to get fucked up. <laughs> Additionally, Stallone claimed that Lundgren nearly forced Carl Weathers to quit in the middle of filming the Apollo vs. Dragon <laughs> exhibition fight. At one point in the middle of filming a scene, Lundgren tossed Weathers into the corner and Weathers shouted profanities at Lundgren while leaving the ring and announcing that he was calling his agent and quitting the movie. Weathers was a prima donna. This movie was basically a documentary. <laughs> 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 So, that's craziness. You, you got you got you want to pitch us uh, Alien, or you want to take some more shots at Rocky? I wasn't taking shots at Rocky because no. I didn't watch the movie. Well, what I was doing is giving it the respect it's due because our gentleman here enjoys the movie. It's, it's, it's a, I don't just enjoy it; <laughs> I live by it. It's, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I live it's by not as series. much a movie yeah. as it is a lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> It, uh, I mean, to me, this this is the thing to me. Like, Rocky movies, like I told you before, are like war movies to you. I just can't watch them and, and completely enjoy them. But the difference for is, the, I'm right. <laughs> like, you're wrong for you thinking that way about me? Rocky movies. Platoon is a phenomenal movie. Platoon is a good movie. It's a phenomenal movie. Yeah. Yeah. Platoon, I, I wasn't a fan of Platoon. It's kind of boring. <laughs> Thank you, most That's war exactly movies are. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah. my exact point. You just said my exact point. That's how I feel about Rocky. It's, it's nothing against the movie. I, I, I like Oh, yeah, I, like I, for, I forgot, I forgot yeah. about Platoon 4 and 5 and Platoon Balboa. <laughs> I forgot about that. Platoon Balboa. That's how popular <laughs> Platoon was. Doesn't It stands alone. It doesn't need sequels. But, I mean, it's it's, it's fun to franchise. It went along. It's, it's all good, but it's just not. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. At all, like it doesn't. It doesn't inspire any like warm fuzzies or anything. It's it just, didn't make you want to like do something with your life. Okay, so every time it. I watch a Rocky movie, I do something positive. Honestly, if I live my life by watching Rocky every night of my like life, I'd be so much further ahead in life. What's up? Yeah. Because it gives you like a four hour buzz of then just I want to do you? something. Because then you go a few days without seeing Rocky, and you know, like anything else, you go through the <laughs> Yeah, you go through it. <laughs> yeah. bad. I got a girlfriend. You want to watch Rocky all the time. It's, it's, no. I, I, have nothing, I have nothing against Sylvester Stallone at all. I like, I like his movies. I like Rambo. I like other movies he's done. It's just, I, the Rocky movies never did anything. Mean, it's, it's the same story. It's the guy fights adversity. Everyone thinks he's going to fail. Nobody believes in him. He wins. Oh. And it's the end of the movie. Apollo Creed died. No one saw that coming. <laughs> the man died in the movie. People died. <laughs> It happens. It's always a black guy, so it, it, that's just what happens. <laughs> but and if it's up to him, it'll always be the black guy. And he guy. wasn't the first one to die in the series. That's Correct. true. They killed Mickey in the third. As a white guy, they all they're they just all rude about and, that. Oh, oh, and he lost the match in the original Rocky. Yeah. Yep. Boom, boom. Just destroyed your whole argument. And yeah, yeah, I'm supposed to be impartial, but you know what? Yeah. You come at Rocky, you come at me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the other reason why I was not actually going to try to fight this fight too hard. <laughs> because I knew where it was going to go. It's three on one. The black man's getting jumped, but we can take this out in the parking lot. Me and my boot will end it. I was going to say you can't even walk at this point. I'll knock you over. <laughs> and also, Trust me. with the light breeze. Whenever they're in the ring and Apollo's on the ground dying, and uh, Dolph Longer just goes... If he dies, he dies. <laughs> he doesn't care. He doesn't, he's emotionless. He's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, one of the greatest villains in movie history. <laughs> yeah. And Rocky even, like, as a pot, like, Rocky kind of waits till like, Apollo is, like, basically on the ground dead and then throws in the towel. <laughs> yeah. Because of the heart. Because he can't tell him. Do, 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 do. So, so tell us about Alien. So Aliens is one of my favorite movies. Um... I, like I said in the past, when I've watched it, I, I, I watched it when it from earlier when it first came out to on what's it called, Super TV or Prairie Cable when I was a kid. Um, and it scared the piss out of me. Like, it was one of the when first Vic times. When Vic was a kid, he used to sit on the floor of his grandmother's house and listen to the old radio vaudeville. <laughs> <laughs> well, to look at me, you wouldn't know I was older than all of you, so there you go. Not by much. How old are you? I'll be 39. Yeah, I'm old enough. <laughs> but not by much yeah. um, but literally I remember sitting at, sitting at my house it was dark my mom was at work there was a storm out and that movie came on I had no idea what, what it was when I saw it I just saw Alien I was like oh an Alien movie no mm -hmm. big deal mm -hmm. and I sat there and watched that movie 
and it literally scared the piss out of me. I had every light in the house on, like, <laughs> like everything, to make sure that, that like, the, 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 the shadows in the room weren't aliens, like, crawling around yeah. on the wall, because they did a phenomenal job in this movie. The story itself is about a uh, exploration team, a salvage team that are on a ship called the Nostromo. They are returning after a salvage trip, and they uh, are in stasis. Um, their ship, who's controlled by an AI called Mother, wakes them all up and says, hey, by the way, there's uh, something sending out a distress signal, and by their charter, they have to check it out, make sure there's nothing going on. So they do. Um, I think if I was ever in space or underwater, any random, unidentified distress <laughs> signal, fuck it. Yeah. 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 We're, like, we're going to let that go. But if they tell you, procedure, but if they tell you we're taking all the money you have and throwing your ass in jail, you're going to pretty much do it, probably. And you're not in charge. If you're the captain, maybe, but you're probably not going to do it. Yeah. So they decide to go down to the planet. They decide to, to check it out, see what's going on. Everybody wakes up. Um, they go and explore to find out what's happening. Uh, three-man team goes into the ship where this distress signal is coming from. Um, and exploring, they find uh, what we now know is called a space jockey, which is a gigantic alien that's sitting inside of this huge chair. And they see that its chest is ripped open from the inside out. So they're trying to figure out what's going on. Um, in the process, they come across what seems to be a hatchery of some sort, and one of the idiots decides to walk down and stick his face inside of something that opens up in space. Again, with your, you're probably not going to do that if you're smart. <laughs> right. Like, give me a stick. Let me poke that a couple so, times. So here, see what's going on. I know exactly <clears throat> because this is supposed to be set like, you know, several bunch of years in the future. You would think by now they've watched enough horror films <laughs> to know not to do that shit. <laughs> It's just right. like, yeah, same thing with zombie movies. Yeah. No yeah. one has any idea what's going on. Yeah. Like, yeah. Everyone. There's knows. zombie movies out of not. It's uh, like it's really quiet, and there's a bunch of dead people laying on the ground, and, and there's fact, somebody eating someone. Why are we going this way? In fact, I'd honestly say, as a nation, we're more prepared for zombie attacks than anything else, <laughs> yeah. any country or anything yeah. else. But Except for zombies. him, he, we've already proved he's going to die because he's going to go. He's going to like sleep on the land instead of taking the boat. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We had an episode of Zombies. And oh, yeah. He's yeah. like a grocery store would be the best place <laughs> to be because they never get in buildings. But if you're smart enough, you're going to poke the damn thing with a stick and hope nothing jumps out and eats you. And if something does jump out, they hit it with the fucking stick and run. That's the rules. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm laying that down right now. These are the rules of exploring scientific areas where there's aliens involved. Or you just don't do anything. <laughs> Like any, real, like any real job, you say you did it. <laughs> yeah, I looked at that. There's nothing down there. But um, <laughs> we're, good, yeah, <laughs> we're good. It didn't. Nothing. Oh, yeah. I got signals. No, you don't. That's just me. I farted. Corey's with us. <laughs> He's got gas. Um, so they, they explore. Um, he gets the face hugger, which I've been aptly named for this battle. Um, you almost were face huggy brown. But, face huggy um, brown. This guy, Vito. Yeah. I, I you vetoed a, 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 a racial thing? Yeah. Wow. I know. Good You're growing. I just, well, <laughs> well, I growing as a human I, I being. I didn't think it was that funny. <laughs> I actually thought it was kind of funny. But, Thank you. Know, you. <laughs> as long as I get like the face hugger inside of like, uh, you know, fish tanks. You know, things. Oh, okay. I didn't know what you were uh, pointing to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, <clears throat> so. I'm going to face hugger for you right here. <laughs> <in. laughs> All over your <laughs> face, neck, and chest. So the face hugger attacks him. They take him back, which is rule number two, do not take the alien back to the ship. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we've learned this, but they do it anyway in the interest of science. They take him back, they quarantine him, which is probably the rule, um, and try to figure out what the hell's going on with it. Um, they can't figure it out. It's choking them every time they try to take it off. They try to cut it off. It starts bleeding acid. That's, you know, warning number three. Um, it bleeds acid. We're probably going to all be dead, dead soon, so let's just throw that off the ship. And go. That would have been my. That would have been. That would have been the good thing to do. But I'm okay with it because, in the interest fans. of having a continued movie, we we can, we can we forge on. So uh, after the gestation period of the thing that's pumping uh, alien beings into his body uh, finishes off, it, it falls off. They go and grab it, and they realize that uh, this thing is kind of weird. Um, and he's laying there. He thinks everything's okay. Everything seems fine. They're like, okay, let's just get the fuck off this off this rock and go home. They're ready to go back into stasis. They're having their last supper, which is aptly named, since most of them won't make it to the end of the movie. Um, and dude starts getting sick. And he ends up on the table, and this thing pops out of his chest and runs off. So now they're double fucked. But it changed the way they did alien movies mm -hmm. altogether, because even the National uh, Library of Congress admitted this movie into the National Library of Congress. It's a national treasure. 
I'm sure Rocky did they give a, did they may give have been a, a national treasure. Did they give a reason why? Because it's a great one of the greatest historical films. It needed to be preserved. Quote, unquote. <laughs> but did Ro- uh, did Alien knock down the Berlin Wall? <laughs> well, Rocky didn't knock down the Berlin Wall. Oh. Reagan did. Well, bring, uh, Mr. Think... Gorbachev, bring down that wall. No. Quote unquote. Yeah, he, he Reagan quote saw unquote. the movie exactly. and he's like, I'm gonna go to <laughs> And and you know who who I would give credit to before Reagan? Hasselhoff. <laughs> Hasselhoff, his music literally yeah. brought down the wall. <laughs> he's huge in, he's huge in Germany. Yeah. He sang it. That the, was the music they were playing when they brought the wall he down. Per, no, he they were playing. He performed. <laughs> I can't believe I'm the only one. You're the only. I, one I, I think I remember that now that you say that. I mean, I know. Yeah, I know he's huge in Germany, but I didn't know he was performing. I think the Germans think that Hasselhoff is from Germany. Ads. I know, right? <laughs> I had to watch a minute 14 ad today. <laughs> is that Hasselhoff talking? Yeah, talking about the dream. Why? Is he adopting a German accent? Why is he doing a German accent? Look at his shirt. It's lighting up. <laughs> it's like the Chris Jericho jacket. It looks like the piano in the, in the Michael Jackson video. Oh, Jesus. And then his next biggest gig with the Spongebob movie. <laughs> we can play more than 15 seconds of this, because this song's all about freedom. <laughs> Performed by David Hasselhoff. On whatever date. You can find it on YouTube. <laughs> Let's cover our asses. They start taking the wall down. <laughs> There you go. He was talking about his dream. I think that's the most influential dream in American history. Am I, am I wrong? Yeah. I think that's right. No. Nobody else has had a bigger dream. I would say, by on. far. Oh, Jesus. He didn't even have to make a speech about it. No. He just sang his yeah, song. He just sang his freedom song in his light-up jacket. I've been did Martin Luther King Jr. have a light-up jacket? No, no, he did not. He did we not. had to go there. <laughs> Excuse me, Vic. Oh, thinks because he's black, he's related to Martin Luther King. He just assumes everyone is. Alright, so continue. Related. I am actually related to Martin Luther King. <laughs> yeah, I know, we all are. No, no, I God's am actually children. related to Martin Luther King. He is he is actually a like great, great, great Junior guy. or the Lutheran guy? <laughs> Junior. Okay, all right. Yeah, actually, true to life, not fucking kidding. Oh, wow. Just now, very serious thing. looking. Wow, well, to say with your attitude now, I would have assumed Malcolm X maybe, but... Uh, no. By any means <laughs> necessary. Let's hear... My grandmother met him, but that was about it. <laughs> Let's anyway, so, to answer your question, it's a great movie, you don't and that's why they did it. <laughs> Need I add more? Would no. you like more? I can, no, I can continue. Turn on. Turn on. I was, okay. I was just curious if you know why. Yeah, because it was uh, named the, what, the 33rd best movie in the world? By who? By the film commission. Okay. That's why it was nominated. Well, so you, you just have to finish your sentence. Oh, you just say, by who? Oh, by, uh... By Craig. The By guy Congress. Lives, the guy I told you who it was. Congress. 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 National Library of Congress. All right. Carry That's on. Congress. Okay, anyway. <sighs> Moving on. <laughs> so, Alien gets away. They figure, eh, it's little. We'll find it. We'll kill it. We'll put something. Yeah. We'll throw it away. Get it off the ship. We'll go home. That doesn't happen. Because once they figure out that this thing's loose and they start looking for it, they start finding um, skins. Bigger and bigger and bigger until finally they realize that this thing is bigger than them. And people start popping off and disappearing like crazy. Um, and until there's literally uh, only a couple people left. Um, during the course of the movie, Ripley, who's played by Sigourney Weaver, who this actually started um, her career um, kind of upswing in which she participated in four more movies just like Rocky. Since that apparently rates as to whether or not a movie is has anything significance, it has to have sequels. A little bit. But anyway, I digress. Um, <laughs> she uh, figures and prequels. out... And prequels, that's true. She figures out that uh, there's something else going on. So she finds um, one of their one of her uh, crewmates and finds out that he's been sending messages back and forth to their, um, their parent company who has told them that they're not to kill this thing, which is why they can't find it, because he's helping it to escape... 
through the corridors and everything by opening up hatches and doing crap so they can get away um, because they want to bring it back and use it for military um, testing and everybody else on the ship is um, expendable. And since he's an android, it probably won't try to kill him that they know of. So Ripley rips his fucking head off, which is just apt and appropriate. Rips the android off? Rips the android's head off. When the android's head comes off, like a, a white the, yeah, substance, this it white grows his like, like a milky... Yeah. yeah, they had that in the second And it spurts one, so all yeah. over the place, and it's actually kind of nasty the way they do it. Yeah. <laughs> didn't, uh, didn't in Prometheus, didn't they get its head chopped off too? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of a thing. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I thought Prometheus. Androids are not safe. In the no, not world. at all. I thought Prometheus was one of the worst movies I've ever. Oh, seen. I thought it was really good. I really liked it. Oh, I, I hated enjoyed it. it. I hated it. If you liked Alien, you have to. Enjoy yeah, it. you have to. You have to watch it with like. I, and I, I thought I was going to hate it. Like when I first, I was like, I'm not gonna like this because it's just gonna add more questions to something that they've been trying to answer for five movies. Mm-hmm. But. After watching it, I actually enjoyed it. I just had to not try to connect it to those movies till it was done. See, you, that was the you don't thing. realize how many people tell me that. And here's what I'll tell you the same thing I tell them. It has nothing to do with any of the other movies or connecting anything. Or re- It's you that fucking like it. cunt that they made the hero <laughs> you don't who like I her. just wanted to die. <laughs> Every fucking time she opened her goddamn mouth, I wanted her to die. What was she from? What is she? Fucking you know, hell. Yeah, she was she from she hell. Was, uh, uh, she was in... Uh, uh, Pennsylvania. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, I said the... Uh, the girl of the dragon. The girl of the dragon. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is where she was from. Pennsylvania? <laughs> Cunsford. <laughs> Cunsford. <laughs> Um, the, the word that's the other thing about our show the yeah. word cunt has to appear at least right. several times before it gets uh, it's a sponsor Charlize Theron though she's a bad bitch I wonder no love well, Charlize yeah. Theron yeah. love her <laughs> she should have been the hero yeah yeah they should have reversed her but yeah Charlize Theron she just does the, whoever that, that main bad girl, so girl well. was ugh she yeah. was just horrible so, I, learned, that's what a, I learned what a C-section was in that movie like, that's the first C-section I've ever seen it was gross <clears throat> At least, a, at least it was done with like a laser and it cauterized and yeah 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 uh, <laughs> no they stapled it they, they, yeah, they yeah. stapled it oh and then she was like still running and do it. you just gave birth to an alien <laughs> right. I did like yeah it, it, it's to get off on something else I mean it's and I, I a lot of people actually feel the same way you do they're like I hated that movie mm-hmm. I, that's a new one to me I didn't mind her all that much I oh. think she was a little bitchy but the movie awesome. itself she didn't ruin the movie <clears throat> for me. But, yeah, no. You know, the, the movie like, was too good. Yeah, the the, the end fight that. between the alien and the and, and the Promethean was just yeah. like that that fight was epic. He was just beating the living crap out of him. But um so basically she figures out that they're trying to capture this alien. Um one of my favorite, most underutilized and underexposed actors in the world, Yafit Kodo. I love that dude's name for some reason, it just cracks me up. But uh the black guy. Uh. <laughs> that's, what I thought were, that's what I thought it was. Yeah. Well, who else would it be? It wasn't yeah. going to be like the, the white guy. <laughs> Y'all fit. <laughs> as hip as you want to be. But uh, they, they basically figure out that they just got to get the hell out of there. They want to get on the uh, on their escape craft and, and get out of there. So they go back to the main ship, which the alien, which that's one thing I also meant to bring up. Like, I love these movies. They're the greatest movies ever. And it's actually kind of fun to watch the, the, the nonstop follies of how these people interact with, with these aliens. Because... Especially when Ripley goes back to them later on. But you're watching this going, you really shouldn't leave the, 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 the plank for the ship down. Like, and nobody's watching it. Like, every space movie does that. Oh, yeah. Land the ship, drop the gang plank, and leave it open. Yeah. <laughs> like, close the door. Well, maybe they have yeah, to yeah. open and close it from inside. Like, she, she, Ripley was still shoot. inside. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was the security officer. She was still in there. <laughs> She's the one that was like, don't bring that fucking thing back on the ship. Yeah. And they're all going, oh, no, we have to bring it. Yeah. <laughs> like, she was the smart one, and luckily she survived. Why? Because she's the one that didn't want it on there in the first place. But uh, they figure out that they're going to get on, they're going to try to escape. They're going to set the ship, uh, they're just going to set the ship on self de- self-destruct and get the fuck out of there. Um, the only problem is they only have one uh, life support craft, so they're trying to get all the supplies they need to get off of the ship. Um, and they separate, which is, you know, another rule of every horror movie and everything else. Don't freaking go off on your own thinking you're going to survive because you won't, even though they had epic flamethrowers. 
<clears throat> which still didn't seem like setting fire to your How ship did in they space. Not set on fire? <laughs> well, I mean, it's all metal. Especially you have, to, you, have to, you have to assume it's all metal. Tom <laughs> when he was when he was looking, he had that. Guy, and there was one time I'm like, he's going to catch something on fire because that flame was getting out there pretty. Or he set himself on fire, even. And, and they were all self-contained. There was just, like, this little tiny jelly jar underneath of there. And those things went forever and, like, for a mile away from them, which is hilarious. Well, like, I mean, it's set way in the future, so oh, yeah. they probably have a new... Yeah. <laughs> super, super Fire charged. Fuel, it only takes yeah. that much to, like, yeah. put out that much flame. Yeah, it's awesome. But, um, so they, they chase down the alien, trying to avoid it, trying to get it to go in a different direction than they're going so they can get on the, the, on the escape ship. And it picks them all off. One by one, it takes them. She chases them down, tries to figure out where they are, and figures out that it's actually storing them on the ship, um, which we don't actually understand that whole process. When you're watching the movie for the first time, you're like, what the fuck's going on? And it's great because they leave that kind of as an open thing because that's not a, it's, not a, it's not a queen. So it leaves it as an open mark. Like, why the fuck is this thing doing that and not killing them? And it never answers that question. But then you know, like, okay, well, they're going to make another movie, and that'll probably answer it. And it does, and that was great about this movie. Like, it left questions that let, let you go thinking about the movie and wanted to see what they were going to do when the next one comes out, which we already knew what they were going to do. But So she gets on the, on the ship, on the escape craft. She gets everything set. She gets that stupid fucking cat that they've been chasing around the I entire was, movie. Was, <laughs> why was that cat so damn important? That, that cat never should have been there in the first they place. Were, uh, they, they all had hipsters. to have, you know. Yeah, she was... They, they were hipsters. They, uh, they needed to have something to stroke. they needed some on You there. know. They're... Sigourney Weaver was the original cat lady. I, <laughs> I, hated I wanted her to die the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but there's one, there's one scene where she's getting into her, like, little sleep pod, and she hangs bush. Like, you can see... Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know if anyone else knows. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, her for that? I rewound the scene. <laughs> and paused it. <laughs> Did I just see Bush or is it just shadow? <laughs> that was, it was the 70s. Was well, that, I mean, those outfits they were wearing were just like sheer like white panties and, and like yeah. a, a little hanger t-shirt type of deal. Yeah. So there wasn't no not seeing anything. I was actually kind of surprised we didn't get stuck seeing more. But uh, <laughs> what's your name? Uh, what's the other chick? Um, Veronica Cartwright. Her, she annoyed piss out of me. It's like she cried the entire movie. Uh, like that's yeah. why. That's why I was like, when she died, I was like, oh, thank God, I don't yeah. have to listen to this bitch cry anymore. Just fucking die and let it be done with. Because <laughs> yeah, she, she was just she, whining the entire movie. She was pretty like, bad. how did you get on this shit? Like, someone should have like put you on something else. But um, so they, she gets on the escape craft. She gets ready to leave. She takes off. And she thinks everything's good. She's got the cat, and she's putting it in a stasis tube. I would have just left that fucker out there to die of old age. But it may have tried to eat the cords, as we all know. I don't know if you have a cat, but they'll eat the cord of yeah. anything. So it probably would have, like, killed them all. But uh, she puts it in stasis first, because, you know, you got to put it in stasis and put yourself in. And she realizes that the fucking thing is on the ship, which was another epic piece of cinematography. Because I saw that thing sitting there. And I rewound this thing over and over again, going... Wow, those tubes look just like that alien. And then I did, like, the first time I watched it, I was like, those tubes look just like that alien. And then I kind of kept watching what was going on. Sure fucking enough, that alien comes crawling out of those tube works, and it, it was the alien. And I rewound that and watched it, and, like, every time I watch it, like, it just matches perfectly with the entire interior of that ship. And you would not know it was there, like, the first time you watch it. So, and, like, the special effects in this movie were, like, top-notch, especially for the time that they made them in, so the movie they made in. So she escapes. She figures out this thing is on the ship. She's like, fuck you. You're getting off my ship. <laughs> she gets into one of their uh, EVA suits, which I don't think they called it that at the time. I don't think that was the terminology. That's the new terminology. Um, and basically boots it out the fucking door <laughs> on a string and freezes it to death. Which <laughs> it's behind the ship like the dog in vacation <laughs> right. that's tied to the bumper. <laughs> but it's great. So you figure, um, my, I have a couple problems with that whole part of the process, with me being a, a science fiction person. Like, that alien has like has uh, acid for blood, so it probably doesn't, and a hard shell, so it probably doesn't need air. So if she's towing that bitch behind it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, it's going to thaw out when she lands. I'm figuring there's going to be a problem, so. <laughs> yeah. But, well, it ended up going up into the, uh, some yeah. kind of tubing or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, for the first movie of a series, it, it lent itself so well to, to creating a story that they were able to make more off of that made sense, that, like, you could watch it and, and still be just excited about the movie and what was going to happen. Even though now you know exactly what this thing is, there were still, like, 
ongoing surprises because of the way they set it all up in this movie. So it's definitely like one of my favorite. I'll say this: I did enjoy the movie. However, I felt that there's a lot of downtime throughout. I was just like, yeah, sure, they're trying to set up the the you know the emptiness and the loneliness of space and everything. But I felt a lot through a lot of it. I'm just going, this is kind of boring. I get it. I get it. We're in space. I get it that there's nothing around and. We're trying to build up tension for uh, the, the alien possibly being around the next corner. But it just, there was just, a, I was just like bored through most, not not most of, through a lot a lot of parts. As opposed to Rocky IV, which I was never bored. Welcome back. Time for some commercials. Uh, again, we are joined today by Jeff Vibbert, uh, the man, the myth, the podcast hosting legend. Uh, tell us a little bit about where people can find you, Jeff. Thank you, Brad. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeff, <coughs> JeffVibbert.com, J-E-F-F-V-I-B-B-E-R-T. Uh, I'm on Twitter, the Jeff Vibbert, Facebook, Instagram, all the same name. I'm on Snapchat. Kush Smoka sixty nine, <laughs> best best screen name ever. I did it. You I got did, it, huh? Nice. I, yeah, I posted that as a joke on Instagram, but I don't think people understood. I think people just thought I was trying to get friends on stuff. I don't. Know. So yeah, I'm on there and I'm doing that. So and the Jeff Fibber podcast, yeah, Jeff which is available on iTunes anywhere else, SoundCloud, Stitcher, uh, and at jeffhibbert.com. You'll find a bunch of goodies at jeffhibbert.com. It's a, it's a real good website. It's, yeah, it's just like, it's like the Disneyland of the internet. The question is, can you find Kush? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 just email me, and I'll you can personally email me, and I'll get back to you. Um, and also check out uh, the show he works for, uh, the Bob and Tom Show, on all types of uh, FM radio stations. They need the promotion. They're yeah, not doing they need, they need well. it. Um, Nobody's heard Well, they haven't had me on there. That's that's one of the problems. That they'll be doing better than uh, they are, yeah. So you can find me, uh, IndieBradScott.com soon. You can also get there from BradScottComedy.com that has all the links to the social media along with funny videos, including, did we do a How Was the Ride In? We didn't, no. We'll need to do that today. Okay, all right. Um, and uh, also uh, Facebook, Comedian Brad Scott, and Twitter, at IndieBradScott. Corey, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram and Letterboxd and Twitter, at MKOGonzo. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Vic, if you need to find a black man, that's me. Black and angry. B-L-A-Q and angry on Xbox. You can find me at MillerKing51 on Twitter and Instagram. Happy to see you. Honey, we've been looking for a black man for months. <laughs> yes. We can't find we one. We just right found it. one, all because of this podcast. And speaking of this podcast, the Showdown Podcast is on Facebook. Click like. It's on Twitter at the Showdown Pod, and we are going to be at something called PopCon in Indianapolis. Uh, Corey, uh, what information do you have about that? Yeah, PopCon is going on. Uh, what is it? July twenty six, June twenty six, twenty seventh and twenty eighth in Indianapolis. Convention Center, uh, three days of uh, pop culture. You got Sam Jones from uh, Flash Gordon is going to be there. Sam Jones from Ted and Ted Two, or Flash Gordon. Um, Edward James Almost is going to be there. Give that movie its due. No, I won't. <laughs> yeah, um, Edward James Almost. They just announced Casper Van Dien is going to be there. Wait, wasn't he in Casper? Who? Casper Van Dien. He's the friendly ghost. Yeah, that's right. Wasn't he? Yeah, wasn't he in? Wasn't he the friendly he's ghost? He's very in the white. movie. He's yeah, very the white. old school movie. <laughs> I'm not joking. Yeah, oh, I, I was joking. I, <laughs> I think it is. You think he did the what? I'm gonna look that. I up. don't think he did. I don't think that was him. It was. Stay tuned while we check the line. Hold on. Oh wait, no, that wasn't him at all. No, <laughs> he <laughs> was like 26 when that movie. I thought you were just going for it was a white guy named Casper. I was gonna roll with it. Malachi. 
Usually Casper we get our ass stomped on for rolling over his jokes this yeah. time. <laughs> Casper Van Dien was in Starship Troopers, which I just watched yesterday. Great movie, uh, great movie. He was in uh, Sleepy Hollow and uh, the Mortal Kombat, the new Mortal Kombats that they've been doing. They've been going out on the web and they've just released DVDs. Uh, which, he's great as Johnny Cage in that, I'll say. Um, but who else? There's, oh, Chris Masters is also a uh, former WWE wrestler. is also going to be there. But more importantly, we're going to be there. Uh, we're going to be roaming the hallways, and uh, we'll have our we'll have our camera uh, there. We'll do some we're doing some stuff for our YouTube channel. So if you see us, let us know. And uh, hey, you may yeah, seriously, let us know because we don't believe there's anyone listening. Yeah. So reach out to us some way because as of right now, I'm convinced it's just Patrick because my girlfriend doesn't even listen anymore. <laughs> so I think it's just Pat- Patrick. Patrick the blind guy. Patrick the blind guy. Ah. What's up, Patrick the blind guy? Hey, Patrick. Patrick. Hope you I thought it was Patrick Starfish. Good. No, he really he, ostracized our one listener. Uh, Thanks a lot. Yeah. Way to go. He, yeah, we have no. Well, how many other Patricks do you know? You're. He's gonna be so pissed when Six. he sees you. <laughs> Luckily, he'll never be pissed. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, check us out at Popcorn. Yeah. Look for that on the YouTube channel. And if Vic has his way, we'll be walking around with boxing robes on. Yes, absolutely, which I'm down for. So, uh, yeah, check that out, and I guess we should get back to the show. All right, welcome back. Jeff, uh, you are the guest judge, guest referee, my friend. Go first. Uh, what, what is your decision? Do you have one? I think it's a split decision. I don't know. That's the only boxing term I know. <laughs> Not uh, again. What, is, what does split decision mean? Is that a... So... The judges, the judges are just completely divided the on The judges it? are like, three yeah. judges for this guy, three judges uh, okay. for this guy. All right. And then it comes down to the, the head judge that is in the back, and I don't know boxing. Um, <laughs> just fake we don't, it. We, don't, we, we all we do. Don't really know just fake it. Nobody knows. Uh, I don't know. Both movies. I selected both movies, so this is a, it's a very hard decision. But it's like choosing between children. Yeah. I mean... Actually, was, it's kind of more important. That was the other hard thing about this whole thing. How do you bash someone's favorite movie? Like that's why I was like, I'm just gonna say because I don't know if you've listened to our show before, but I usually rail hard ass on yeah. about this movie. I, I mean, so I was like, I don't want to do that because no, you, then I get fucked because I'm already three against one as you, it is. You should have. I <laughs> had Aliens back, but I agree with Corey when he says that there were parts in Alien where it was slow, but it's two completely different movies. I picked a bad. I picked two bad movies <laughs> against each other, but. I had to pick Rocky Four, but just because it it motivates me vote. to be a better person. <laughs> <laughs> everything you said about I Alien, the motivation. <laughs> everything you said about Alien, it's such a good movie. But Sigourney I have a Weaver, I'm completely fucked now because of him. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna go back to the Rocky theme song now. I can hear it coming. Sigourney um, Weaver is just the worst character. I don't like her. I don't know why they had her be the main character. Women's empowerment she apparently was, was really. A big thing she the time. was pretty crabby if you think about it. Yeah, and she looked like a man. <laughs> yeah, she was, yeah. uh, she wasn't hot. She always. Shot, though. <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> you didn't have to use past tense. She looks she like looks a like, man oh, now, yeah, that is true. like and ever since. Um, so yeah, I love Rocky Four. It's in my top fifty, I think, uh, favorite movies think of all time. Is. Um, Close to your top ten. No, no, no. Not Rocky Four. Uh, also, hang on. Can we not? Leave out the fact that Rocky Four is a Christmas movie. It has yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I watch it every Christmas. Yes, yeah. uh, he's he's hundred percent right, and it did. It stopped a war. It took down a wall. Um, but then <laughs> I actually watched Alien uh, recently. Uh, my daughter wanted to watch it, um, and uh, you know, it's you go Rotten Tomatoes. It's got ninety seven percent certified fresh rating, which is. It, extremely it's rare for science know. fiction. Um, even Meta, uh, Metacritic, which is way harsher and uses uh, way more reviews, it's 83%. Uh, Roger Ebert, who initially was very critical of it, came back and said later on that it was one of the most influential modern action movies of all time. And it is a very scary movie. And I'm very, I'm always very intrigued with anything as Lost in Space. But, a lot like my daughter with the movie Alien, I checked out about five minutes into your argument. <laughs> that made me... That first segment of your argument was as slow as the movie. <laughs> it really didn't pick up until the Hasselhoff stuff came out. Like, let's be honest. That's one of the worst segments we've had on this show in a while. And Rocky 
four had hearts on fire and Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> and much like Dolph Lundgren and Sylvester Stallone, Corey beat your chest so Corey hard didn't that your heart, heart punch you did hit your rib cage. The heart punch came from the ref. It's unanimous. The heart punch came from yeah. the ref. <laughs> I tell you, how many weeks has it been since I've had a win? I think at least, well, when you get... Technically, it's been like back, a month and a half. It's been longer than that since you've been gone. Oh, yeah, because I was gone for a month and a half before I came back, and it was like two weeks before that, so... This song makes me just want to run up the stairs in Philadelphia. It yeah. makes you... It <laughs> it really does throw my arms up in the air. Alien doesn't make you want to do anything positive with your life. No. It's Rocky movies always do. <laughs> and, and and like I posted on... I think it was, it was just on Instagram that I posted it. So if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen it. Um, I liked the chestburster alien from Spaceballs better than I did the alien. It's the same alien with a hat on. <laughs> it had a it hat. Had hey, Jack, my baby. Are we going to let our guest <laughs> now, uh, have a drink? While we're on the topic of the alien, I would just like to say rest in peace to the alien from the movie Alien. Yep. He was a Nigerian immigrant, and it was his first job acting, and he was 39 when he died. Gone turn, too soon. We should probably turn down the gonna All fly now. And put some in memoriam music. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> put that in the background. Yeah. <laughs> the Undertaker sound again. The the bells. Oh, okay. But rest in peace. You have that and leave by the way, you leave in most of uh especially big searching for a fucking hour. Oh fuck you. <laughs> just to say Oh hell no. If that goes in there I won't be sure. You know how many times we've kept you out just look for something? Museum. Uh, <laughs> it was a music. Erica! <laughs> Something that has no <laughs> impact on the argument. Oh, God. Let's hope you can pick it up next fucking episode. <laughs> All right, so uh, final decision stands. It's unanimous. Corey has taken back the belt. Uh, and our next episode will also feature Jeff Dibbert. And it will be found footage. Uh, it's Chronicle, Chronicle versus, versus Project Almanac. Almanac. Um, and, uh, yeah, we will have a, a great deal of fun with that. Okay, so we thought we would take uh, a minute here to give a special hello and a shout-out to some of our followers on Twitter. Uh, keep up with at this shite pod. It's the shite podcast. This shite podcast. Uh, at odd underscore podcast follows us. Uh, at Space March. Uh, I would like to say a very special hello to at I am uh, Backman. I am Backman. That's the I'm Batman. worst. That's the <laughs> shittiest superhero <laughs> of all time. Um, but he's Backman. I'd like to give a shout out to um, who, this apparent member of ISIS at SSDVCZ111. <laughs> um, apparently, uh, that's ISIS writing. Yeah, that's that's I, ISIS writing right there. Cold. Yeah, that's ISIS. Um, at AB Film Review, uh, the Pod Bros Network. I'm not kind of interested in what the Pod Bros Network is. It's a network that would make your grandparents proud, and it's based out of Detroit. We like Detroit. Kid Rock likes Detroit, so I like Detroit. <laughs> Dave Landau's in Detroit. Uh, at Brian Bushwood, Brushwood, which is just at Schwood. S H W O O D. Schwood. He's certified. He is. Digital Humpty Underground. Uh, yes. Humpty. Yes. Humpty. The Humpty follows us. That was one, that was one I was really excited about. That Me yeah. too. It's a big, that's a big thing. Yes. We, well, this follows us. We only have chance. one movie we could do. No, we actually, there's two. Don't they have um, Digital Underground in... Um, I'm not, we're not doing nothing but trouble. No, no, no. What's the other one? Um, the Bad Superheroes. With um, oh, Jaleel Garofalo and them. Aren't they in that? With, I um, don't know. Oh, the Mac and them. Cheese podcast. It's an honor. It is an honor for the Mac and Cheese Who show. Love Mac and Cheese? Those are two mates who love to argue. Uh, they, uh, they, love, they also love discussing the weirder things in life, like news, science, music, movies, celebrities, and more. They're out of Sydney, Australia, and uh, one of them kind of looks like Stitches. Is cheese or Mac? Which one looks like Stitches? Ah, I can't. It doesn't say. Yeah. They don't, they don't, wait, wait, wait. Maybe it says here. In the picture. Nope. It's a weird news podcast. You know, that's an idea we should have gone with. Well done, Mac and Cheese. Well, you don't like this one? Mm. 
At Pacers fans follow us? Ugh. No wonder our podcast can't ever win anything. <laughs> and a uh, big shout out to, um, I don't know, The Kitchen Counter. The Kitchen Counter Podcast. Uh, it's a podcast about home cooking out of Oregon. They gave us a shit. Uh, and, uh, yeah. They mentioned us one time. And they, they're, they're got like three times as many followers as us. Uh, so good for them. So, yeah, those are the people we want to say hello to. Um, and uh, make sure you join us uh, next time for the found footage uh, episode. And uh, for Corey Miller, Vic Miller. No relation. Uh, the late Jeff Vibbert. I am Brad Scott. Not dead. Again, still alive. Not dead yet. <laughs> but this show is. See you soon. Later.